What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today's South Park The Fractured But Whole. In my many decades of playing RPGs, sometimes I think I've seen it all. From the snowy hills of Final Fantasy VI to the destroyed craters of Grandia II, there's some great stuff in this genre, but nothing can quite compare to just how wild this game is. Let me start this video by saying that I'm using all the safest footage I could, because if I showed you everything that really happens here, I would definitely be banned off YouTube. There's meth heads collecting cat pee for drugs, topless strippers giving lap dances, and farts that rewind time. Alright, I'm accidentally getting too far ahead. We should begin with what kicked off this adventure. We're the new kid in South Park. Cartman, Kyle, Kenny, and the Nomo crew have decided that we're cool enough to hang out with them, which means that we get to join in on their epic clash of superheroes. Half of the fourth graders have sided with the Freedom Pals, and the rest, well, we're the Coonan friends. It's our job to go around solving crimes, defend justice, and hopefully get more famous than those jerks in the Freedom Pals. Gaining popularity and Instagram followers requires that you get your name out there by doing good deeds, or at least punching some drunk rednecks. Much like the Stick of Truth, this sequel is still a classic RPG, but with far deeper mechanics. While the first game had standard turn-based combat, now we're getting more strategic fighting. Players act one by one. When it's your turn, you can move a certain amount of spaces depending on your walk stat, and then you get to select a strike. Every hero that joins our party has a totally different set of skills that basically make it where they can damage enemies in a totally unique way. Whether it be the Mosquito doing straight line flying hits, Call Girl using her technology talents to blow up cell phones from long range, or my own character's speciality, bare knuckle face pounding. A major new aspect of this combat that's really important to notice is that they've added the idea of knockback. Certain specials will actually push the bad guys, and it'll make it where if you position yourself properly, this can lead to some some big bonus pain. Slamming people into cars can count as two attacks. Surrounding one target can let you essentially stab someone in the front and the back at once, or you can just use it to screw up your foe's magic. For example, right here, a minion of Professor Chaos is trying to shoot his pea cannon at me. This is a seriously nasty attack, obviously, but once he selected the zone of where he wants it to land, I can shove him to change where it will hit. This really gives you a lot of control on the battlefield, that way you can focus on what's going on around you instead of just rushing your foes. In a few of the bigger boss encounters later on, they really lean heavily on this system, so practice it early, that way you're prepared for when a giant death hooker shows up. This might sound rather heavy and hardcore compared to the original game, but they mix in the same great humor to these fights. It keeps you laughing even when you're getting your butt kicked. There's so many small moments that are so goofy, like right when I was going to war with these jerks in the middle of the street, someone set my basher on fire, and as I'm sitting there burning up, a car drives past, leading us to all have to freeze the match, step aside and wait for it to pass. All the while, my freaking dude is still just standing there in flames, making me utterly crack up. The world is completely built around these silly jokes, and seemingly every minute of exploration you're bound to run into something. One mission can have you trying to rescue a friend from evil waitresses at a local restaurant, or recruiting Captain Diabetes in a super strength so you can break down barriers and get into a new area. Everything is absurd, but thankfully it doesn't get stale. It's constantly funny in a shocking way that manages to become increasingly bizarre as you progress. I mean, really, even the collectibles are strange. Check it out, Craig's Dan is a fan of, well, what he calls fine Japanese art, which really is just drawings of boys cuddling. Finding this hidden yaoi earns you extra cash and usually leads you down even crazier secret routes. That bonus money really comes in handy when you need to purchase fancy upgrades to your costume or artifacts, which are a key part of growing stronger. Leveling is done in this game in a way I've never seen before. Basically, your entire party shares a level and it goes up very slowly. Every time you do manage to raise your hero rank though, you get a new artifact slot. Equipping these provides boosts for your squad as a whole, like making physical damage more deadly or getting specials faster. It's really an interesting way of handling things since it's so simple. You only end up having to bother with menus every hour or so, instead of constantly going in there to tweak your character. I'm sure it's clear by now that there's loads to enjoy in South Park, and yet I still do have a big complaint about it. It is extremely handholdy, like this is perhaps the most guided RPG ever made. 
At all times, there's a main objective in the corner of the screen that tells you exactly where to go and exactly what to do. Now, I'm not saying I don't like general directions, but maybe just tell me, investigate the school, rather than having a quest that says, build a super fart burrito by gathering up a tortilla and the cheese from the top of Jimbo's store. Role-playing games are usually fun due to the wandering around and getting lost, figuring out what to do, and I didn't feel like we got nearly enough of that. The other aspect of gameplay that kind of bothered me was that we can't customize other heroes' moves. It left some characters as being very useful and basically mandatory for most fights, and others just plain awful since they had such specific attack patterns. Really what I'm getting at here is that I just wanted a tiny more depth to this adventure overall. However, for those that are just coming into this looking for some awesome humor and genuinely mind-bending combat, this is definitely for you. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving South Park the Fractured Butt Hole an 8.5 out of 10. You know, right now I'm actually sitting here and I'm just wondering how the heck anyone is going to live stream this. Real fast here at the end, I just want to thank you guys. It has been a crazy few months. Almost every single review now is getting a thousand likes the first day. That seriously helps me out so much and it just melts my brain. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If this is your first time watching one of my reviews, maybe consider subscribing. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Now it's time for me to go back in there and find the rest of all that delicious yaoi. Oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.